Hello, Keith Ruck here at VengeMachinery.org. Guys, I got a little quick project we're gonna be working on today, um, and I don't think this is gonna take a whole lot of time, but I thought it'd be kind of interesting. It's gonna be a little bit different kind of setup, uh, doing some boring on the horizontal milling machine. Uh, now, what I'm working on is, this is a part uh, that goes on uh, a three roller cane mill and most people probably aren't familiar with what that machine is but down here in the south back a long time ago it was a very common uh, thing for people to grow sugar cane and then in the fall they would crush the cane into a juice and boil it down basically to make their own syrup and or sugar. Uh, so it's basically a crude way of making uh, sugar uh, which was a very needed product uh, back many years ago. And uh, it's kind of become a tradition down here in this area uh, to, to raise cane and grow cane syrup. Uh, and, and a little bit farther north of here in North Georgia, North Alabama, Tennessee, up through there, very often did it with sorghum. Uh, they would grow, raise uh, sweet sorghum and again, they would crush the cane, get the juice, boil it down and make a syrup and or sugar out of it. Uh, this is a part off of a Golden's cane mill, three roller cane mill, and it basically fits on top of a shaft and it's, a, it's just a bearing block. There's a, a bolt that holds it down on the top and it's basically just applying pressure on the top of that cane mill roller uh, that's turning at a very slow RPM and uh, it will just basically hold it in place. Uh, the gentleman, a friend of mine lives here locally, asked if I could help him make a new one. And uh, he's wanted to do it a little bit different than I probably would have gone about it, but he uh, has got some contacts in the community that's doing this, and this is what a lot of them are doing now. Instead of doing cast iron and bronze like this, they're just making these blocks out of some uh, ultra high molecular weight uh, plastic. This stuff is pretty slick, and uh, there's not, again, there's not a lot of speed here. There's really not a lot of force on it. It's just kind of holding it in place, and this plastic actually uh, does a good job of lubricating it and, and doing what they need to do. So he provided me with some plastic. I took it and just kind of squared it up over on the uh, vertical mill. I didn't show that process, uh, but basically just got it machined down to size. Now, what we're gonna be working on is we gotta get this radius. Uh, and I kind of got it drawn out on the block here. Uh, I think it's inch and three quarters. I'll double check my measurements uh, before we get down there. But this part needs to be precision. It needs to fit the shaft exactly right. Also, the top just kind of has a radius on it. I'll probably just cut that on the bandsaw and, and put on the sander. It's nothing critical. It's more decorative than anything else. Uh, but this part is uh, definitely a fairly critical measurement. It needs to be the right diameter. It needs to be true and so, so forth. So anyway, here's what we're doing. Um, this is what we're going to be working with. And we're going to be using the horizontal mill to bore this out using a boring head. So let's go through how we're going to set this up and do it. So I've got a vise mounted on the middle machine here. And as you can see, it's, it's turned 90 degrees from normal. Uh, but this gives us access in this axis uh, to bore this thing out. And uh, when I laid this out, I literally found the center, uh, just sketched it on there. I used the compass to just kind of scratch that radius in there just to kind of give me some guidelines. And um, I, I got a mark right here, which is the center. Now, it's not super critical that this thing be exactly in the middle or whatever. What is important is that it's straight and it's the proper diameter. Uh, so I'm just eyeballing this. I, I, I got that point there. I got a pointer sticking here in the milling machine and I'm just kind of lining up on that. And uh, I'm confident that I'm within a few thousandths of an inch of being right dead on center. But again, that part's not super critical. Uh, so this part is set. Now what I've done now is I've locked my tables. I've locked the height and I've locked you know, the left and right here. So the only axis that I really can still move in is moving in and out, which is the direction uh, that we'll be boring in. Uh, we'll be having the feed come across the table here and do it that way. Um, and that's gonna work out real good here because I can actually now take the part out of the vise and set things up, come back in here. When I put it back in there, it's, it's right on on the axis I want. And again, my in and out doesn't really matter where that's at. So that's where I'm at now. This part is set up. We're gonna get the boring head on here and get ready to start boring this out. So I've got this big boring head here. Uh, it's a 50 taper boring head that fits on the horizontal mill. This is actually the first time I've used this. I've had it for probably, I don't know, a year, a year and a half. And I just never had a 
reason to use it until now. Um, so, you know, this is just like one you would use on a vertical mill or whatever. There's three holes here that you put boring bars in and you turn this on the end and it just kind of moves out. So you put a boring bar in there, you make your hole a little bit bigger. It's, it's, there's a gauge over here on the side that tells you in thousandths of an inch, actually in ten thousandths of an inch, uh, diameter. So um, anyway, real nice there. Uh, I've got a brand new boring bar that I just got for this thing. This is a one inch shank. It's a long boring bar. Uh, that's deep enough to do what we need to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and we'll install this. Uh, there's a set screw right here at the top. That'll lock that in. There we go. So after we make our first pass, uh, we'll be able to go through here and just make this thing a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger each pass through until we get it to the diameter that we need. So anyway, this is how we'll be doing it. And let's see what we need to do next. So first things first here, um, you can see on the block here, this scribed line out here, this is where I want to end up at. Now with this boring bar, and you can see the big diameter on it back there, I've got it basically in as far as the, the head will go. And this is the cut that it's making. It's a really big cut and it's actually not cutting all the way to the center. So this thing basically has a minimum diameter for its uh, smallest cut that it will do. And it's, we got some material in here. And basically what I need to do is remove some material out of here uh, so that this thing will clear through. And I've got this line to kind of go off of. I don't have to get all that out. It'll clean it up. It'll make a pretty heavy cut with on this plastic. Uh, but what I'm going to do is go over to the bandsaw and we're just going to kind of nibble out some of the center section in here just to relieve some of that for that first cut uh, to make it cut a little bit better. So let's go over to the bandsaw and we'll nibble that out. So this plastic cuts pretty good just using a regular wood cutting bandsaw. And uh, I just got a regular blade in here. I've already cut a good bit of this stuff. So um, I'm not sure I'll be able to cut that arc or not with this blade, but we'll see what we can do. Yeah, so it's not going to let me cut quite that heavy of a curve. There we go. It's just the, the thickness of this blade is too wide to make that that tight of a curve, uh, so we will we'll just kind of nibble it out. I make another release cut here. There we go, that'll just give us some relief in there. Um, doesn't have to be perfect, we're gonna cut it all out anyway. I just need to get some relief in there, so that'll work. All right guys, we're ready to make our first pass here. Uh, we've got the boring bar set up. I've got my speed set on about 850 RPMs. Uh, I'll play around with my feed rate. Right now it's on two and an eighth inches per minute, which is just where I was last time I used the mill and uh, I'll engage my feed and we'll just kind of cut through here and see what she does. Looks like it's cutting just fine. see a problem coming with the vise may hit the head before we get all the way through the cut but I can uh, I can slide that in closer 
This isn't the final pass, so it really won't matter. Okay, I'm going to bump my feed rate up. We're on about three and a half inches per minute now. before we hit the vise. A little bit too close for comfort though. Uh, that's, uh... I'm gonna pull it out a little bit more. That's about as far as it will go. And let's see what we got. The stringy stuff I hate dealing with on this plastic. I am going to loosen this up. I'm going to slide that in closer. That'll give me some more clearance on the back side. But that's not a terrible finish. It's not as nice as I want either. I think I need to feed my actually make my cut go faster uh, will help out. Plus I'm making an irregular cut right now. So let's see what we can do. I may have to also sharpen this uh, cutter up a little bit just to make it where it's, uh, it's cutting this plastic a little bit finer. So just make a bigger cut here. not too bad I think I'm going to take that out and sharpen that cutter though all right I went over and um, using my green wheel this is a carbide on here so I just I just sharpened this thing up I just cleaned up that edge you know when I took this boring bar out I just purchased this boring bar uh, brand new uh, got it from Travers and it came and when I opened it up I'm like man that thing kind of looks you know, a little bit on the rough side. I mean, not, it wasn't terrible, but it, it looked like it had been used. And I, I think that someone actually returned this after they used it. No big deal. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it. It was just a little dull. Uh, but we've sharpened it up, and I made another pass off camera. And, boy, that just made a really nice slick cut. Um, I'm taking about a 50 thousandths total, so about a 25 thousandths cut. But it's 50 thousandths on the diameter. And uh, anyway, we'll just come through here again and uh, let you guys see it. Much quieter, making a really nice finish in there. I, before I was getting some really ugly cut down there in the bottom. Now we're getting this fuzz over here just because we're getting an irregular cut. Um, that's one thing I, I really just dislike working with plastics because of crap like this. Uh, it's just hard to make a clean cut. You know back when I worked in the machine shop we did some plastic jobs and I always just hated doing them. Uh, but anyway we'll get this job knocked out. This boring bar is doing the trick. 
really making a nice finish in there and I think it's going to do exactly what our customer wants. in here and just go right down this edge with a razor blade and cut that off. Very nice. So right here is where I make my adjustment. Um, and I, I measure this with an indicator because this is the first time I've used this head. I want to make sure I knew what these measurements meant. It's, it's marked in like five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Uh, the, these are actually ten thousandths and then there's lines in there for one thousandths and again that's on the diameter uh, so uh, if I move this five I'm actually moving the head twenty five thousandths but that'll be fifty thousandths off so each number is uh, ten thousandths off the diameter and we're just gonna go ahead here I'm gonna go back to zero that should be another fifty thousandths pass uh, which seems to be cutting nice and we'll just sneak up on that number. So I've been playing around with this boring bar and uh, boring head and just ma making sure I can dial this thing in accurately and I have to say that I'm pretty happy with what I'm seeing. Um, this thing is really dead nuts on. I'm able to dial in exactly where I want to go and um, so we tighten that up. And it, but it, this thing is a precision, precision instrument, which is exactly what I want to see. Make another pass. We're still cutting about 50,000 per pass. It would probably cut more than that just fine. Uh, in fact, I'm confident that it would, but this is giving good results and I just don't want to mess, mess anything up. Uh, we're just making one part. I'm not worried if it takes me an extra 15, 20 minutes to make this. So uh, we're just going to go right on there. Uh, my last measurement was two inches, 450 thousandths. So we got about um, 300 thousandths to go. We're making 50 thousandths per pass. It should be about a 250 thousandths after this one. All right, guys, we got our board to the final diameter. Everything looks good there, but we had a little shop visitor come by uh, while I was off camera there, and Mr. Bozo made a trip to the shop, and uh, somehow or another, uh, I made a mistake, and I accidentally bumped my feed uh, lever for the uh, x-axis there and uh, it's, while it was feeding in this way, the table was also feeding this way, and we got a little bit of a boo-boo right here. I don't know if you can see that. It's kind of wipe, wiped out on the white, uh, but the cutter got in there about an eighth of an inch before I realized what was going on, and I stopped the, the mill. So uh, um, I'm not happy with that, 
Uh, I'm going to tell my customer, this is a, I'm doing this for them just as a favor. I'm not charging them for it. Uh, I'm going to tell him if he wants me to remake it, I will. Uh, but I know he needs this to get going, and I don't think that's going to matter much to get him going. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this one up and get it to him. And uh, if we need to make another one, uh, I, I'm just going to make another one, and I'll probably do that one off camera. But time is of the essence now, so we're going to go ahead and finish this one out and at least get him where he can run his mill. And uh, like I said, if he's not happy with that or upset with that or whatever, I don't think that's going to have any effect on the operation of the machine. In fact, I thought about just coming in here and putting a big chamfer in there and hiding the whole thing, but you know, that's kind of cheating. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, it is what it is at this point in time. I'm not happy with myself, uh, but things like this happen and sometimes it's good enough is just going to have to be good enough, at least for right now. So we're down to the last step here and basically what I need to do is, is just um, trace this arc on here. I'm going to actually cut this on the bandsaw and then we'll trim it up on the sander. So let me grab a sharpie and that'll kind of give me a line to work off of. Voila! Finished up. Um, I think I'll give him a call and see if he wants to come by and pick this up. And uh, hopefully this will get him back in business so he can run his cane mill. He borrowed this one off of a, another mill, I believe, and was needing this one for his. So uh, anyway, job done. Well, there you go, guys. Quick, dirty project. I uh, got this knocked out for Mr. Burt, and uh, hopefully he'll be his cane mill going here pretty soon. Uh, uh, I'd like to go there and see him running while he's doing it. Maybe we can uh, work that out and get a little video of some cane grinding, uh, which uh, some of you guys would probably enjoy seeing. So anyway. One more project knocked out. Uh, some plastics work. Again, not my favorite material to work with, but you know, you just do what you got to do sometimes, and that's what we did here. So, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the boring on the horizontal mill. And with that, we'll sign off. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll talk to you later.